The Western mainstream media would have you believe that the whole entire Chinese economy is crumbling before their eyes because some real estate developers ran into financial difficulties. Yes, sir. I'm not freaking blind, guys. It's Squalo style. I think it's Thursday. You could die? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Geez, you know? Oh, yeah, because it goes on and on and on. For all you haters, there's something to chew on for the next couple of... Welcome back to the Guilao 60 channel. Yes, you hear all of the horror stories about Evergrande and uh, their problems in the world of building high-rise apartments, shopping centers, movie theaters, and then all of a sudden, the whole world fell down around their ears. And... Uh, the foreign media had a frenzy. They were so happy to see something bad happen to China. And yes, something bad did happen to China. Uh, a lot of speculators were buying up houses, apartments in China. And uh, up until just lately, it was a great deal. You would double, triple, quadruple your money. The number of people at rent in China is rising. But you have to understand that about 90% of all of the people in China own their own home. Chinese people are savers. Not only do they own their own home, but they, they have no mortgage. A lot of them have no mortgage. And if they do have a mortgage, it's a very small mortgage. So uh, when prices, and prices have gone down in the, in the second, third, fourth tier cities, but if you own your own home, it really doesn't make much difference whether it's uh, worth 1 million RMB or 750,000 RMB if you're not going to sell it. And you have no mortgage. And you have money in the bank. Savers, of course, eh? The only people... The only people that are getting burnt in China right now are the large corporations and the speculators. The large corporations have the government to back them. The government will help them restructure. They, they, they bring in policy that helps these large corporations sort of get their ass out of grass. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll lower restrictions on who can buy homes in certain areas of the country. They'll lower interest rates. They'll make it easier for people to get into these homes, and uh, then these big corporations will sell more homes. Will they have to sell them at a, a little bit of a discount? Sure, not in the first tier cities they won't. Beijing and Shanghai, Guangzhou, uh, Chongqing to, to uh, uh, Shenzhen. The prices may have gone down just a little bit, but uh, it's not big enough of a drop for anybody to even notice in those first tier cities. Where you see uh, the, the problems, you see them in the second and third tier cities, not so much a fourth tier cities because uh, that's a different, that's a different uh, demographic. But in the, the second and third tier cities, uh, you've got a lot of urbanization. You've got a lot of people moving in to these cities and uh, they're not, they're, they're, they're from the farm. They're from rural areas. They're not flush with cash. Uh, so they can't afford as much as the rich people, the multinational corporations and, and you know, all of the foreigners that get drawn into places like Shanghai and Beijing. They, uh, they, they have less bucks in their jeans type thing. So the, the property values have dropped somewhat in these areas. But see, the people that are buying these properties think this is a good deal and they're getting better interest rates if they're, if they're uh, getting a mortgage to buy their property. So when you hear the Western mainstream media, the Australian media is, is really on top of this big time. And they say that uh, the whole economy is in the toilet because real estate is, is just being devastated in China. Well, you know that's not true because, well, for one thing, it comes from Western mainstream media and they very seldom tell the truth on, uh, on those media outlets. When they, when they base China's economy 
being devastated just because of a couple of real estate uh, corporations running into financial difficulties, well, you know that that's not really the truth. What it is, is it's a, a government and mainstream media from out there pointing their fingers saying, ha ha, you know, something bad happened to China. Well, lower interest rates are good for the people. Less restrictions in buying properties are good for the people. Uh, most of these people have owned their own home in China, so it doesn't really it doesn't really bother them that that the prices have gone down in some of these uh, some of these second and third tier cities. The only people, as I said before, are the speculators. And Xi Jinping said this a number of years ago, that uh, homes are for living in, not for speculation. So if they would have listened to him back then, uh, a lot of these speculators that are that are whining and crying and saying, well, we lost money, um, wouldn't be whining and crying. But really, did they lose money? Because when, personal experience. Back in 2004, I bought a, a home in Bay High. And I paid 113,000 RMB. And this is like 110 square meter, two bathroom, three bedroom place, on the fifth floor, mind you, in Bay High. And uh, the reason I did that, because Bay High was the fastest growing city per capita in the world. And if you get something growing very, very fast, well, property prices are gonna go up. Okay, so that was a, you know, a decision that I made. 13 months later, I sold that thing for 250,000 RMB. So from 113,000 RMB to 250,000 RMB in 13 months. So even though prices are going down, you know, 5, 10, 15% in some places, 16% in some places I've even heard. Uh, the prices went up so high to begin with that these people aren't actually losing any money because their price, their property value has gone up so much. So losing, you know, 10 or 15% of that rise in their property value is really not that big of a deal. Most of these people are still way ahead of the game and uh, and that's just the way of it. But uh, see, I took that 250,000 RMB and I went to, to Nanning and I bought another place for 250,000 RMB, exactly the same amount, and now it's worth about a million. So you've, you've got to look at, uh, you know, the, the big picture, not just, oh, this happened within the last year. Well, property values went down this much in this time period. They're not telling you what happened before. They're not telling you that the Chinese got property rich in a very short time period, 10, 15 years, where property values were going up like double, triple, quadruple in some areas. And, uh, but they don't, because that's not their narrative. Their narrative is to tell you how bad it is in China and how their economy is, is, is getting trashed and all of the people are poor and, and they'll never recover and the country is going to fall to its knees and, and just throw up their hands and give up and say, yes, the Western world has beat us because property values went down a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's that simple, guys. This, this, is, this is what we live with on a daily basis as people that live in China. We hear this regularly. We're used to it. The people that aren't used to it are the viewers out there watching mainstream media that have never been to China and don't understand what China is and how it operates. And uh, it's a big country. It's got lots of different areas, regions of the country, and each region is different. Each region has different demographics, uh, different, uh, uh, say, Guangzhou is manufacturing, or Guangxi is, is agriculture. You get up to, uh, you know, places like Beijing and Shanghai, where it's service industry because of the, the population. So to, to blanket and, and paint the whole country with one brush and say, well, properties are, are dropping across the board, the whole country, well, it's just not true. And... Uh, uh, to, to listen to something like that and actually believe it is, uh, is it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but if you've never been to China and you listen to your mainstream media and you, and you believe that, well, then I guess you're the people that they're talking to. You're the people that they're trying to 
misinform. Um, pull the wool over your eyes, uh, give you fake news about China to make you feel better about your world and the high price of your property. The high interest rates that you're paying for your property. The high property taxes that you pay for your property. I've owned a home in China for 17, 18 years now. 20 years. Actually, it's been just, close, just about close to 20 years. I've never paid monthly property taxes or yearly property taxes on my properties. Why? They just don't have that in Guangxi Autonomous Region. You pay a little bit of tax when you buy the place, and that's basically it. I think it's 1 or 1 1.5% of the, the, the property price. And so you can see that they have it better in China dealing with properties than we do here in the Western world. And uh, I think that makes the Western world have their nose out of joint a little bit, a little bit jealous about how China and the Chinese real estate market is actually set up and how it works so well for the people. And uh, they want to put a screw into the works. They want to try to demonize it, as they do with anything in China. And uh, it's just not working because the Chinese people don't really care about what's on Western mainstream media. And the real estate drop that's happening in China is a godsend for some people that are getting into the market. I know the interest rates are for people that are remortgaging, but the people that have owned their homes and live in those homes and uh, sort of paper rich because they, uh, their, their property values have gone up, they don't care because they're not selling. If they had to sell, they'd have to go buy. And you know, it's the same thing here. But uh, the Western mainstream media would have you think differently. Anyway, that's another video from Guilao60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Don't believe the mainstream media. Don't believe your Western politicians. They will lie to your face just to make China look bad. Till next time, peace out. Bye now. Don't forget to resubscribe.